What's up, Pisces? How are y'all doing? It's time to go ahead and take a look at your mid-month messages for April 2024. So when I do mid-month readings, what I am looking for specifically is to see whether or not there has been a change of timelines. We're going to see if timelines changed before we move on to May, y'all. So, for those of you who would like to find out how to schedule a personal reading, check down there in the description of this video. That's where you'll find all the information you need to know as far as how to go about doing that. And speaking of personal readings, for those of you catching this on time, tomorrow, April 18th, we are going to be doing another round of the $22.22 live mini readings. Um... Have no idea when we're going to do it again. You know, I'm pushing to do it as much as possible, but uh, we're going to be doing another round tomorrow. So if you go to my website, tarawithrich.com, and you click on personal readings, you'll see where that is now an option you can choose from. And you can read up everything you need to know as far as how to participate in that. It's fun stuff, man. I have fun with it. All the information's in the description. All right, let's jump in, man. Let's jump in. I'm starting this off with the next person coming in. Let's see if we're still on the same timeline. Next person coming in. Next person due to come in for Pisces. Nine of Swords reversed. Hang on. Page of Wands reversed. Well, this is some weird energy here. This is some strange energy. So this person's coming on kind of strong, I think. I think they're coming on a little bit strong. And, and, and that may kind of freak you out a little bit. Because this person may be kind of, kind of coming across a little bit love bomby, you know. Um, and I know that people see that as a red flag very frequently. Now, I don't know if it's a red flag yet or not. I don't know. But you may be thinking, you may be wondering whether or not that's a red flag for this person to be coming on so strong and love bombing, you know. Uh, maybe you dealt with somebody in the past that came on real strong and love bombing. And that ended up being a red flag that should have told you to stay away from this person. So, I don't know, man, but uh, maybe for some of you, this may be at just such an inconvenient time. Like right when you make the decision that you just kind of want to be single and independent, then here comes this person coming on real strong and love bombing. So... It freaks you out a little bit. Okay. Could be a fellow Pisces for some of you. I also have Leo and Aquarius here. Okay. Well, let's see this person's intentions. Let's see if you should be freaked out about this. Be seeing a lot of that nowadays, man. People out there in the dating world are nervous and scared, freaked out. <laughs> Let's see. What's this person's true feelings, energy, and intentions looking like? Okay, Eight of Swords reversed. Two more. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, this person definitely has some insecurity issues, that's for sure. They definitely have some insecurities. So, but, hang on. Yeah, they do have some insecurities, but I don't think that their love bombiness is a red flag. I don't think so. I just think they're a little bit, um, 
a little bit immature, but not immature in a bad way. You know, because that word immature, it sounds negative, but I don't mean immature in a negative way. Just immature in like a childish, friendly, playful kind of way. You know, not like a, a, a you know, not, not like a, a, a reckless and dangerous and negative way. Just kind of immature and kind of like a, a playful, childish kind of way, you know? But yeah, they are covering up lots of insecurities because I think that they have been abandoned in the past. They have been cheated on. They have been left for somebody else. So they're kind of trying to overcompensate. You know, they're kind of trying to overcompensate with uh, with their love bombiness. But I, I, I wouldn't say that I think it's coming from a bad place. I don't think so. I don't think so. Lover's card. They actually do genuinely have really, really strong feelings for you, like for real. Like for real. Okay, they want something long term. They want commitment. Let's see how it plays out for the first 30 days. How's it playing out for the first 30 days? How's it playing out? Ah, King of Cups reversed. Wheel of Fortune reverse, King of Coins. So the love bombiness isn't really gonna last. I think it's gonna, um, King of Swords, King of Coins. It's probably gonna take a very sudden, abrupt, and unexpected turn in the opposite direction. Like they're gonna come on real strong, you know, real love bomby, real heavy, real hot. And then all of a sudden, that's going to slam to a halt, right? And then you're going to be like, whoa, what the fuck is going on here? What's with this change in behavior? Now you're really, really wondering what's going on. Because, you know, when you lead with your best foot forward like that, especially when you're trying to overcompensate for insecurities and whatnot, that's gonna catch up to you at some point. And usually, and in a high percentage of cases, that happens sooner rather than later, very frequently. So, that's where I think things are gonna start taking kind of a, a, a I don't really say it, I don't wanna say a back seat, but I think probably after the first month, into the second or third month, things are going to take a very sharp turn in a different direction. Hang on a second, I'm going to close my window. Hold up. All right. Well, let's get the advice here. <clears throat> What's the advice? What is the best advice? Ooh, King of Swords reversed. Well, don't let this person play no games with you. You know what? Okay. In the beginning, especially in the beginning. See, it, it, this is where nobody wants to do this. And, and I get it. It can be like nerve-wracking in the beginning. But in the beginning is where you really want to shine a light on the red flags, okay? Let me tell you a little secret, okay? All relationships have red flags, all of them. You ain't going to find no relationship with nothing but green flags and no red ones. It ain't going to happen. The problem is we tend to not talk about the red flags until after the relationship ends. That's when we want to look at the red flags. So people tend to either react one of two extreme ways to red flags. Either they stuff it under the rug, ignore it, pretend that it's not there and hope that it just goes away or 
they take off and run. Oh, red flag, I better go. <laughs> well, I'd like to invite you to kind of pull that back a little bit and let's meet in the middle. Now, I am obviously not talking about crazy, fucked up, wild, deal breaker red flags. I'm, I'm talking about the, the little shit, you know, the little shit. If you end up finding out that this person lives a double life as a crack addicted prostitute on the weekends, then absolutely fucking run. I'm not talking about shit like that. I'm talking about the little things, man. You know, little inconsistency here, little discrepancy there. Say one thing one day, another thing another day, and actions not matching up with words and those little things, you know. Just shine a light on it. Like a mature adult, I'm not saying be bitchy about it. I'm not saying be shitty and snappy and nasty about it. Be a mature adult. Hey, hey, um, forgive me. I, I could be wrong, but I could have swore the other day you said this. Now you're saying this. Did I hear that right? Maybe that, that could totally be my fault. Maybe I misheard you right? Shine a light on it. And then if it happens again, do it again. See, look, look, dude, I can see I could have swore the other day you said this. Now you're saying that, man. It happened again. Come on, man. I know, I know it ain't just me. That's the second time it's happened. You know, be cool about it. Shine a light on it and let it be known that you're paying attention. Because when things like that happen, one of two things is happening here. Either A, the person's blowing smoke up your ass, or B, they're just not paying attention to the things they're saying. I, I would like to assume the latter and give the person the, the benefit of the doubt. Let's just assume that they didn't mean nothing by it. They're just not paying attention to what they say. Well, you better let them know, hey, I'm paying attention to what you're saying. Every little word that comes out of your mouth, I'm paying attention to it. I'm going to be watching to make sure your actions match up with your words and your words match up with your actions. I'm watching that shit. Let it be known so that at least they could say, whoa, well, maybe I ought to start paying closer attention to the shit that comes out of my mouth, you know? All right, let's move on. Past person. Person from the past. Let's see if we're on the same timeline. Did timelines change between Pisces and the person from the past? If timelines change, did they change for the better or for the worse? You know y'all are karmically tied, right? I've been asked that question at least five times in the last week. Are me and this person karmically tied? Yes, you are. I don't need a tarot card to tell you that. If you weren't, you wouldn't even be asking about them. You and this person are karmically tied. So, hang on. Now, I don't know if y'all were karmic soulmates when you first came together, but as of now, you are now. Three of Pentacles. Mm -hmm. Okay. So somebody here is contemplating. Um, somebody here is contemplating making a return. Thinking about it. Death card reversed. Eight of Cups reversed. Two of Swords. Contemplating it. Thinking about it. But with the Five of Pentacles here, hmm, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. <clears throat> there could be a third party in the mix here, possibly, or maybe a suspected third party. It's just too much tension here between the two of you. And I think this is mutual. This does feel very mutual to me. Mm 
Yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna have to see because I'm getting it's getting to the point where I can't tell who's who here. Either y'all are directly mirroring each other, or this is only reading one of you. So let's look and see this person's feelings towards you. Person from the past. How's the person from the past currently feeling about Pisces? Pentacles. Page of Cups. Ah, I think this person would be down to reconcile with you. They absolutely would be down to reconcile with you, but they're afraid that it would be nothing but a bunch of drama. They're actually waiting on you to break the silence. They're waiting on you to break the silence, <clears throat> but they're afraid that connecting with you would be nothing but a bunch of drama. They don't have a very positive outlook on whether or not the two of you would ever be able to breathe life back into this connection. Could be an Aquarius for some of you. Yeah, they feel like it'd be a waste of time. I do think they have a soft spot for you, though. I think so. They're just afraid you're still mad at them. So, okay. I don't think they're mad at you, though. So for those of you wondering whether or not this person is mad at you or holding a grudge, I don't think so. I'm not getting any anger, any bitterness, any resentment. Doesn't look like it here. I don't think so. Let's see if there's going to be any actions or an outcome happening here. Any actions or outcome happening here? Uh, uh, no, this person's pretty much just waiting on you to break the silence. They're holding back, trying not to take action. <clears throat> so, four of cups, page of pentacles reversed. Ace of cups reversed. Whole lot of nada. What's the advice? Would it be a good idea for Pisces to reach out to this person? Ace of wands reversed. Hmm. Well, I do think that if you do want communication... It probably will have to be you that does it, but I don't think they're going to respond or react to you right away. So they'll probably ignore you at first. They'll probably like leave you on red for a little bit. Probably. So I don't know, man. They're going to keep you at a very, 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 very considerable arm's distance, I think. So the only thing that you can really do is be patient with a situation like this. Because if you're dealing with a person that is convinced that you're nothing but a bunch of drama, how do you prove to them that you're not? How do you prove it? I don't know why they think you're a bunch of drama. I don't know. I don't know, maybe you, may, hey, maybe some of you were in the past. Maybe you were. I'm not judging you. You know, we've all done dumbass shit in the past. So let's say maybe there's a couple of you that were a bunch of drama in the past. That's cool. Well, how do you prove to them that you're not anymore? How do you prove it? Time. Time. 
time, patience, and consistency. So you'll probably have to be pretty patient with this person. If you are dead set on breathing life back into this old connection, it's not going to be as simple as you reach out to them. Oh, I miss you. I miss you too. Let's get back together. Boom. It's not going to be that simple. It'll probably take you a few months, honestly, to get this person to let their guard down and seriously let you in. The question is, do you feel like it's worth it to take the chance on possibly wasting your time? I'm not saying that you will or you won't waste your time. The question is, do you feel like it's worth it to possibly take the chance on maybe wasting your time? That's, that's an open-ended question. I'm not here to tell you whether or not it is or it is not worth it. That is completely and totally up to you. I am not judging you one way or the other. Just saying that it is a risk that you take when dealing with this past person. All right, now we're going to move on to the current person. So I got to give my current person disclaimer. If you are not experiencing any issues, problems, or concerns in your current relationship, this is not for you. This is only for my Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus Pisces friends who are having problems in their current relationship, who are experiencing issues in their current relationship, who are having lots of problems with the person they're currently with. All right. What's the problem? What's the issue? What's going wrong? What is going on? Ooh, major trust issues here with the Page of Swords reversed. Judgment. Spoiler alert, you ain't going nowhere. But this relationship is starting to become a burden to you. The burden is getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And it's getting to the point now where whatever, whatever problems you all have been experiencing, you all haven't been actually working through the problems. Now, now who? I don't know. But one the other, or possibly both of you, whenever you experience a problem, you're not working through it. You're just stuffing it under the rug, pretending that it didn't happen, and just trying to move forward. And I got news for you. That energy ain't going nowhere. You stuff it under the rug, it ain't going nowhere. It's going to build and build and build and build and build and build and build, and until eventually the two of you are going to be like a karmic fucking snowball, right? And it's going to start putting a permanent dent in the connection to the point to where it might be past the point of no return in regards to whether or not you all will ever have the same kind of connection you had in the past. It's getting close. It's getting there. It might be right on the line. I can't tell if it's right right coming up to it or if you've just crossed that line. I can't tell. It might be right on the line, the, the, which is the point of no return. Let's see how the current person feels about you. How's the current person feeling about Pisces? How's the current person feel about Pisces? This is a codependency attachment. Chariot. Now, I'm thinking that a lot of you are dealing with a codependent. Could be a cancer for some of you. This is a codependency attachment. 
the long story short of that means that they believe that their emotional state is your responsibility. Okay. So, yeah, it's becoming a burden to them, too. They feel the same way you feel about it. They feel the same way you feel about it. They want to fix this. They just don't know how. I think they would do anything in the world to try to fix this problem if they knew how. They don't know how. They have no idea how. So this is turning into a mutually one-sided situation here. Mutually. I think y'all both being one-sided is what it looks like to me. I think it's getting to that point where you're more worried about you and they are more worried about them. Y'all are both turning real one-sided towards each other. But... As far as this person goes with their intentions, I don't think it's coming from a bad place. I just don't think they know what to do. They would if they knew what to do, but they don't know what to do. Okay, well, okie dokie. For those of you wondering whether or not this person is learning their lesson, the answer is no. I don't know who needs to hear that. But when it comes through like that, I have to say it. Well, like I already gave you the spoiler alert, you ain't going nowhere. So let's see if there's any advice. Is there any advice for Pisces with the current person? Any advice? Death card reversed. Okay, there is no legitimate reason why this needs to come to an end right now. That would be a mistake. Tower card reversed. Death card reversed. Do not end this right now. That would be a big mistake. The only thing you can do. Okay, all right. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to give my go-to advice. For those of you who have followed me for the last couple of years, sorry. I know I've said this a million times. This is for the new faces, okay? There's only one way to work on a relationship. There's only one way. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your sign is. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. I don't care if you're gay or straight. I don't care if you're white or black. I don't care if you're Christian or Muslim. I don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. There's only one way to work on a relationship. And that's to work on yourself. It's all you can do. All you can do. Now, there's no judgment involved here. It doesn't mean that you're the person in the wrong. It doesn't mean that they are the person in the wrong. It doesn't matter who did what. Who should do this or who needs to stop doing that or who said this or who didn't do that. It doesn't, none of that matters. What matters is the only way to work on us is for me to work on myself and for you to work on yourself. And it's so easy to get so blinded and confused by the other person and what they're doing that we don't even look at ourselves. When that's really the only thing that you can do as an individual. All you can do is say, okay, you're going to do what you're going to do. You know what? I'm going to work on improving myself for me. I'm going to work on me for me for the betterment of my life. And if you choose to evolve and grow with me, that'd be fucking awesome. So one or two things is going to happen when you start doing this. Either A, the person that you're with will tag along with you and go on the evolutionary journey with you, or eventually the universe will separate the two of you anyway because you are no longer a frequency match. And if the universe pulls the two of you apart because you're not a frequency match, 
then the universe will bring you a new person who matches your new frequency. There is, it's a win-win. There is no way to lose when you just focus on your own evolution. Anything that you lose as a direct result of changing your frequency was not a loss unless you changed your frequency for the worse. Now, if you change frequencies by dropping down in vibration and you lose somebody, then yeah, that would probably be considered a loss. But anything you lose as a direct result of changing your vibration for the better was not a loss. That's not a loss. So do the best you can to try to take your focus off this person and what they're doing and focus on your own vibration, your own frequency, your own evolution, and let the universe take care of the rest. I think y'all can save this. This can be saved if you play your cards right. All right, well, I feel like those were the messages that my Pisces friends needed to hear, so I am gonna go ahead and end this video here. Thank you all once again for tuning in and playing along. Don't forget to check down there in the description of this video if you would like to find out how to schedule a personal reading. And for those of you catching this video on time, tomorrow, April 18th, 2024, we're going to be doing another round of the $22.22 live mini readings. We're going to be doing that at 11 a.m. Pacific time, but the good news about those is if you're busy tomorrow and you pre-order, you don't have to sit and wait through the whole damn live stream for your reading. You can just come back later on when the playback's posted, look in the comments, and all the readings are going to be timestamped in the comments. So we make it super, super easy for you to get your reading really quick, easy, and super cheap and super affordable. Okay? So... If you go to my website, tarawithrich.com, and click on personal readings, you will see that that is an option that is now available. And you can read everything you need to know as far as how to go about participating in that on my website, all right? All right, I'm out of here now, y'all. I wish you love, luck, light, and prosperity on your journey. Stay blessed.